Good afternoon. We're here live at Davy Medical Center. Um, we're here in one of our operating rooms. Really excited to be kind of in this space. Um, I am not a doctor, just to be clear, um, but I am very excited to be joined by one of our orthopedic surgeons, fellowship trained total joint replacement specialist, Dr. Max Langfit. Dr. Langfit, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Matt. My name is Max Langfit. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Wake Forest. I specialize in joint replacement surgery, so hip and knee replacements. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. So, so tell our viewers, before we jump into the, the real meat of this and talking about joint replacements and maybe some advice for them on that front from a clinical standpoint, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where, where, where were you trained? I think you, you, you had some training here locally. I did. Um, tell, tell, the, tell the crew a little bit about who you are. So I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I came down here for undergrad at Wake Forest and Really enjoyed my time here and stayed here for medical school and residency and um, spent a year in Boston doing specialized tra training for fellowship and hip and knee replacements and was able to come back. So I was fortunate to have the ability to come back here and, and practice and probably spent more than half my life here now in Winston-Salem. <laughs> it's a great place to be and big Wake Forest fan, so there you go. happy to be back here. I am too, but I wore this to, like to, for, for your sake as well. <laughs> I, knew, I knew you were a Deacon fan, so we're both excited about Steve Forbes and uh, hopefully one of these days we'll get back to sports, right? Yes, looking forward to it. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about um, joint replacement. Let's see if there's some questions we can answer for folks here on Facebook Live. Uh, one of the things that I know you get asked a lot, we hear from the community a lot, is how, how, does, how does this deterioration happen? How does the body get to the point that your joints and your bones start to deteriorate? And, and how do we know when it's time to come see a specialist like yourself? So joints can start to hurt from several different conditions. Commonly, it's osteoarthritis, uh, psoriatic arthritis, um, avascular necrosis, which is decreased blood supply to the hip, inflammation in the joints. Uh, those can all cause pain in joints. Okay. Uh, usually what happens is patients start to develop swelling in the joint, pain in the joint, uh, some warmth in the joint, uh, limited range of motion, and commonly, unfortunately, their activities start to be limited too, and it causes them pain and they stop doing things they enjoy doing because of the pain. Um, a lot of these things are multifactorial, so there's several different things that can cause arthritis, for instance. So it's partly genetics, it's partly wear and tear, it's right. partly aging, old injuries, traumas, things like that. Uh, inflammation in the body can also lead to worsening arthritis as well. But, you know, it's a stepwise process, and over time, uh, as we all age, our, our joints do start to wear down. And we talked a little bit of, as someone who... <laughs> Who could lose a few, few pounds myself? We talked a little bit about weight being a factor in that also, right? That can be a role. Yeah. Uh, it can be a factor. Uh, so certainly, every pound of pressure, uh, every pound we have in our bodies is four pounds of pressure on our hips and knees. Wow. So that can add a lot of pressure to the joints yeah. and, and pain to the joints, obviously. So you Absolutely. Know, if, if one were to lose 10 pounds, it's 40 pounds of pressure off the hips and knees. So it does make a big difference. And and that's also inflammation in the body too, which can increase joint pain. So. Yeah, absolutely. So I know we talked a little bit about this earlier. I've, I've heard some discussion, particularly as it relates to back pain and some other things that I have that could be solved by surgery, like the joint replacements that you do, that, that it, it's sometimes in our current culture better to be seen earlier, that, that maybe we tolerate pain longer than we really need to and we should come get seen earlier. Are you seeing a trend where potentially younger than normal or, or in the last few years patients are coming in earlier to be seen for these types of issues? I think that's true to some degree. You know, as, as the population is more active and, um, you know, getting out and doing more things outside and right. um, doing more activities, certainly we do start to break our joints down and have more joint pain um, earlier in life. Right. Uh, that doesn't mean that patients who come in who are really young, we have to jump to a joint replacement surge. That's certainly not what we're doing. Um, we want to do the right thing to treat a patient's pain. So we always start with non-surgical things first, uh, and then the last resort option is a joint replacement surgery. So, but maybe, but maybe the takeaway is just don't, don't, don't be scared of coming in and having a conversation yes. because we're going to find the best option for you. Right, exactly. Um, based I mean, on the pain you're dealing with. Right, we're not scary. Coming in for an exam is yep. is a great thing to do. We're always happy <laughs> to see patients and um, make a diagnosis and, and help the best way possible. And especially here at Davy, right? <laughs> Especially easy here at Davy, yeah. right? Patients love Davy. Our, our staff is great here, and yeah. everyone loves Davy, so we're lucky to have this facility. That's awesome. So we wanted to talk a little bit more, Dr. Link, today about um, the option of outpatient joint surgery and the fact that our team here at Davy, our, our team of surgeons, who I think you're going to talk a little bit about, yeah. um, all do these, at least have the outpatient surgery option available. 
tell us a little bit more about that and, and the advantages of, uh, of being able to have an outpatient surgery versus an inpatient. Yeah, so at, at David Medical Center, our team of orthopedic surgeons uh, specializing in joint replacements, uh, we are doing outpatient surgery now. And this is a pathway we offer, and right. um, we're going to um, continue to build on this pathway for patients. You know, our team, not just myself, does these, but uh, Dr. David Pollack, John Shields, Johannes Plata, we're all doing these outpatient joint replacement surgeries, so hips and knees. Um, you know, it's funny to think back, it wasn't even that long ago that patients who had a joint replacement were in the hospital for, for weeks sometimes. Yep. Um, then the past couple of years, it's been several days, and now patients are going home the same day or staying overnight and going home the, going home the next day. So yeah. uh, it's really a, a, a great time uh, with the technology that we have. A lot of this that we've been able to do this recently with these outpatient surgeries and rapid recovery does come from surgical techniques, uh, but a lot of this does come from the fact that our anesthesiologists are so helpful and adept at doing these blocks yes. and the preoperative, intraoperative, postoperative medications for pain control uh, to help the patient's pain after a surgery, uh, help them mobilize faster. Our physical therapists, our nursing team, everyone plays a role in this to get these patients uh, going quickly after surgery uh, and getting them home when they're safe. It takes a village. It takes it, a village. It takes sure. a whole team. Again, <laughs> we're lucky to have the team we have. So. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to me about the role that uh, robotics, um, I know we've got some stuff that we're upgrading here and things that we've been doing here at Davey, but I think some um, some potential improvements coming here in the next month or two. Talk to us about the role that robotics plays in the ability to um, perform outpatient surgery. Yeah, so the addition of, of robotic assisted surgery here for hip and knee replacements does allow us to use this technology to be even more precise with the instrumentation and with uh, the implant positioning. So, yeah. you know, with that, with having that technology, we're basically knowing exactly where these implants are going for patients, exactly where to put them based on a particular patient's needs and and their, their particular anatomy. So with all of that, that should improve a patient's healing time uh, and, and limit recovery and, and help with post-operative pain too. Awesome, awesome. So obviously outpatient surgery, we, we, we go back and forth between outpatient uh, surgical option and same day surgical option, right? So just to clarify for our community, what's the difference between, like what do they need to understand about calling it outpatient? Am I coming in at 8 a.m. and leaving at three? Or is it an overnight thing? Is it a 24-hour, same-day outpatient kind of situation? So for our, for our outpatient pathway, uh, most patients who are on this pathway do go home the same day after surgery. Okay. So they come in in the morning, have their surgery. Uh, after surgery, they go to recovery, then the hospital floor. Uh, they get physical therapy. We make sure their pain is manageable. We make sure that they're safe, that they're able to walk, uh, that their family is comfortable with them going home, that they're comfortable going home. So when that's the case, then yep. we're able to get patients home. Um, some patients are still considered outpatient technically if they are able to go home the next morning, stay one night after surgery. Right. Um, but again, we're tailoring this to the patient. We're not, we're not discharging them from the hospital if they're not comfortable, Correct. if they're not safe. We're doing the right thing for the patient, but just having this as an opportunity for a lot of patients is, is great. And the patients who have been on this pathway have been very happy and pleased, and um, it's, it's been great for the staff too. But, but to clarify, it's not for everyone. It's not something that will be suitable for everyone, but as you said, we're gonna we're gonna cater and 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 specifically create a program that's gonna work for you as an individual. Exactly. Correct? Exactly. So okay. it's we're not pushing everyone in this pathway. This is a personal decision, a family decision, and then also a decision we make as uh, surgeons, and then with the rest of our nurses and therapists and staff, okay. pharmacists. Um, so it's typically the patients who are on this pathway are patients who have limited medical comorbidities who are, are very healthy and having their joint placement surgery yeah. um, have resources at home to help um, but again you know this is it's a personal and a, a, it's a team decision yeah so patients who are ready for this path then they can be on this path but even if they come to the hospital on this pathway they don't really feel comfortable going home the same day they need some more therapy and um, we can we, adjust we can adjust yeah. and, and we can address those things and we'll get awesome. them home when they're safe and comfortable that's the key. That's the key. So um, tell us a little bit. Obviously, we're going to get, we're talking a little bit about recovery. We, we talked earlier about the fact that no matter how nice Davy Medical Center is or how great our patient experience is, they'd still like to be at home, <laughs> right? So, that's it. That's it. so, so we're going we're gonna to get them back there. Tell us what recovery looks like um, with one of these joint replacements. And I know we have some technology that maybe you want to talk about with our force uh, software application uh, that makes that recovery a little bit easier as well. All right, that's true. So you know, the benefit of a patient having an outpatient surgery is that 
they get to go home and recover in the most comfortable environment they could have, which is right. their home environment. Yeah. Like you said, patients love Davey. Um, <laughs> we know, hear it all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, I, I understand. It's great. Um, but you know, it's still not home. And if patients are more comfortable at home, it's a more familiar environment for them. They can sleep in their own bed. Absolutely. We're not waking them up sometimes. <laughs> you know. So it's, it's certainly understandable that you know, people want to go home. Um, so having that as an opportunity is, is, is very beneficial. Um, the other thing as far as what happens after surgery, even before the surgery, we do have a, a software uh, application called FORCE that does help us interact with patients before surgery and after surgery, uh, providing information like what to expect mm -hmm. and some preoperative and postoperative exercises that patients can do before surgery to get ready for surgery and then after surgery to help with their recovery. Absolutely. Um, with pain control, mobility, and range of motion too. Yeah, I've worked with you guys to learn a little bit about that program and it just seems really intuitive for the patient yeah. and helpful when, you're, when you've got so much to remember, thinking about medicines and exercises Absolutely. and all that kind of stuff. So it's nice to have that technology reminding you. Having that as a technology option for patients and also again, the robotic surgery option for technology. I mean, I really think that we're on the forefront of technology. Here. Absolutely. That's one of the things we're proud of with Blake Forest Baptist Health and, and the School of Medicine and all the research we do. It's just, you know, state-of-the-art techniques and, and procedures that we can do. Absolutely. It's really exciting. So obviously we're, uh, we're here in the OR, we're masked up, uh, not just because we're in the OR, but also because there happens to be a pandemic going right. on outside right. of this OR. Um, and we want to make sure that we're encouraging our community and our listeners to, to wear a mask when you're out and take those precautions that all of our specialists, our infectious disease experts are, are telling us is necessary uh, to help stop this pandemic that we're going through with COVID-19. But tell us what our patients need to know about what we're doing here at Davie Medical Center to make sure they're safe when they come here for procedures or for clinic visits, because we know there's people out there that are hesitating to come get. I, I heard a story two weeks ago, three weeks ago that somebody had a knee done and they were feeling great and their other one was going to need it, but they were waiting because they were nervous. So, so, so put those people at ease. Yeah, it's, that's totally understandable. Uh, fortunately, the system we have set up here is that we do screen every patient before they come to the hospital, uh, whether it's for a clinic visit or for surgery. Sure. We're obviously all wearing masks here in clinic, in the operating room, outside the operating room, wherever we are in the hospital, we're wearing masks and keeping this as clean and as safe as of an environment as possible, uh, keeping this really a clean hospital and, and pretty much COVID free in this hospital, uh, knock on wood, and we're yes. able to continue that. We've been fortunate so far, we've been able to do that. And I think part of that, again, is because of our team approach and uh, taking every precaution we possibly can. But the other benefit of you know, the outpatient surgery pathway is that it's understandable patients do not want to be in the hospital. They want to get home. And True. having this as an opportunity allows patients to go home. So. Um, you know, for the foreseeable future, we're, we're continuing surgeries here, we're continuing clinic visits here, and keeping this, again, a, as COVID-free of an environment as we possibly can, and we've been fortunate so far to do that. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, we're, we're all wearing masks. Um, all our leadership is wearing masks across the entire Wake Forest Baptist Health System. Right. And we're also, we're also mandating that all of our, our patients and families that come in are wearing masks. So uh, definitely trying to keep that clean environment um, consistent. For everyone that comes to see us. That's right. Make sure that they know we're taking care of them, not just clinically, but also in relation to the pandemic. Of course. That's yeah, right. that's awesome. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking a little bit of time to be well, with thank us. Thank you. It's great to be in the OR. It's a nice, fun setting. I get to pretend I'm a doctor for a day, <laughs> uh, even though y'all are the real, uh, real experts. But um, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. I really appreciate doing this. And thank you all for being with us. We want to let you know if you, if you need more information, if you'd like to schedule an appointment with uh, Dr. Langford or one of our other uh, joint specialist orthopedic surgeons or any of our doctors within the Wake Forest Baptist Health System, you can call 336-716-WAKE. That's 336-716-9253. And you can also find us on the web. We've got a special website set up for this pandemic in this time for uh, resources that you need related to understanding what's available for you at the hospital and helping you get care. That's wakehealth.edu backslash get care. Again, wakehealth.edu backslash get care. I'm Matt Britt, and thanks for joining us today.